Welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara Breen. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Ed Byrne and Russell Howard, Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis and Stephen K. Amos. <laughs> Our first round is called If This Is The Answer, What Is The Question? On the board of six categories. Stephen, which category would you like? The economy. OK, the economy it is. The answer is £100 a day. What is the question? Can I just say I'm very excited to be here, by the way, and uh, if things don't go too well, I will be playing the race card. I'll be honest with you, it's always worked for me. <laughs> is it, perhaps? Okay. How much Iceland food does the Katona family go through? Yeah. <laughs> is it what does Jade Goody spend on magic beans? <laughs> <laughs> is it, is it uh, how much more was Joseph Fritzl spending on groceries than <laughs> seemed normal for a family of his size? <laughs> is it, uh, I know we're spoiling that dog, Joseph, but now he's in flip flops. <laughs> <laughs> is it how much does Max Mosley spend on plasters? <laughs> That spanked for five hours. It'd be horrific. I hate it when I stub my toe. <laughs> yeah, but you don't stub your toe with your arse. <laughs> <laughs> Is it how much could you earn if you answered this ad? Work from home, must be gullible, no skills required. <laughs> Is it how much is Brooklyn Beckham's pocket money? <laughs> Is it how much would I pay somebody to dress up as a lion, go to Ikea and hide in a cupboard? <laughs> <laughs> Is it, is it what do I pay my cleaner? Not to go to the police? <laughs> is it, is it, is it um, uh, David Blunkett's swear box as he hangs pictures? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, so I, I get he'd miss the nail because he's blind. Why is he hanging pictures? He's blind. <laughs> <laughs> It is something genuinely to do with houses, isn't it? It is something to do with houses, yes. What is the average house price going down by? That is exactly right. Well done, Frankie Boyle. There you are. <laughs> yes. The question I was looking for is how much has been wiped off the value of the average British home since January? House prices have fallen on an average of £17,000 this year. Many commentators are talking about the current slowdown turning into a recession. Ooh. In fairness, nobody's done it like that. Nobody's yeah. yet gone. Evan, it may soon be yeah. a recession. Ooh. <laughs> and it's not a recession. Stop calling it that. It's not. Well, it's all in the marketing, isn't it? If you call it recession, that sounds like a bad thing, whereas Credit Crunch sounds like a flavour of ice cream by Ben & Jerry's. <laughs> you can tell there is a recession, though, because on Monday there was a headline in the Daily Mail which went, Win a £300,000 dream cottage. Tuesday, win a £285,000 dream cottage. <laughs> Yes, Wednesday, please. win a Vauxhall Zafira. <laughs> there, was two, uh, there was two guides on how to deal with the credit crunch tips kind of thing, and one was in the Guardian and one was in the Sun on the same day. And the Guardian one was like, do your own conveyancing if you buy a house and do your own legal work and that kind of stuff. And the Sun's one was, polish your shoes with a banana. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, kids, I've lost my job, but we'll be fine. Watch this. <laughs> <laughs> Which right. side of the banana? Do you use the inside of the banana or the outside of the banana? The skin of the banana. The skin, the skin of the banana. Yeah, we used to do that at, uh, at Scouts. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, just, just, <laughs> what just, just in case... all of us had Game Boys, all right? What, what, just in case we are lost in the jungle? <laughs> and, and, you, and you needed your shoes polishing. <laughs> Excuse oh, me, Akela, I want to work for my homosexuality badge. <laughs> That's outrageous. You can't accuse me of being a homosexual simply because I like clean shoes. <laughs> the other day yes, when I, I call can. you... <laughs> <laughs> they are very doom and gloom about the whole thing. I and it's amazing, because when, well, when the house prices are going up, it's all doom and gloom because, you know, first-time buyers can't get on the property ladder and people are getting into too much debt and, and, and you know, releasing too much equity in their properties and all that. And then when the house prices go down, it's all doom and gloom because house prices have gone down and for something that's just doom. And no-one ever looks on the bright side, you know, things like, well, maybe now it's easier for first-time buyers. Or the really good news that 4,000 estate agents are going to go bust. <laughs> that's a beauty. Beauty. <laughs> yes, you're right. They'll be, 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 be moaning about money, aren't they? 
I bet you, even if the Queen, even if you got the Queen on her private train, she'd be sitting going, have you seen how much it is for a cup of Darjeeling and a swan roll? <laughs> <laughs> It's really... Do you know what I feel really sorry for? Because fuel prices are going up and there's a, a real credit crunch, isn't there? I feel sorry for those people who have, like, electric Santas and snowmen and reindeers on the roof. <laughs> They're going to have to economise this year and have just one sign that says scum. <laughs> there has been, though, hasn't there? Some, <laughs> some other good news. You know, we, apparently, due to the weak dollar, we're actually earning more in Britain now per capita than the United States of America. So, obviously, we've had to put up with, you know, their McDonald's everywhere, their Starbucks. Maybe soon it's going to be our, our turn, you know. We'll be able to go over to Moscow and we'll be able to see Greg the Baker's... <laughs> ..Weatherspoons and the West Cornwall Pasty Company. <laughs> it's a little dream, isn't it? <laughs> You've got to have a dream. Yeah. Yeah, that's... But it's, it's, it's all kind of knocked on from America, isn't it? The, the problem it is, essentially, there. yeah. Because there's two companies that are in trouble. There was an amazing headline the other day that said, Fannie Mae in trouble. <laughs> The two largest financial institutions in America are Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. They're but shorthand the is, for the Federal National Mortgage Corporation and the Federal Home Loan Mortgage Corporation. When I read the headline, Fannie Mae Collapse, I thought Kerry Katona was pregnant again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not an, I'm not an economics expert, right, uh, about this. I think the general gist of why this crisis is taking place at the moment is because American banks give lots of mortgages to the studio audience of the Jerry Springer show. Uh, <laughs> It turned out in time that Cletus and Billy Bob couldn't pay back the cash, and now we're all in the shit because of it, right? Yeah. But just to put it in context, have you seen any of the graphs during this economic crisis, and this is the worst situation that's all there, have you yeah. seen any of the graphs of house prices in the last ten years? Right? Just broadly speaking, this is the line. They've been going... Bing! And bing is the recession, all right? Uh, all of that... And then this little bit is what we're worried about at the moment. Well, we should think, look on the bright side, I think, as, as has been mentioned uh, by Ed. If house prices are going down by an average of £17,000, we could all move up north and buy a house for a pound. <laughs> <laughs> there is another advantage, though, as well, isn't there? Is that in the credit crunch that we're now experiencing, we are having to watch less adverts from Ocean Finance. <laughs> you <Yeah>. know? <laughs> I passed, I passed Howard from the Halifax ads the other day and he had a sign that said, we'll dance for food. <laughs> <laughs> and also, talking of the adverts, the worst thing is Marks and Spencers have been hit by the credit crunch. So if that spoils their adverts, that'd be horrific. That's the most erotic thing on TV, isn't it? <laughs> you're sat there, it's the chocolate and the cake. You're sat at home going, I'm going to shag the telly. <laughs> There's people been actually nicking stuff from m and haven't there? Yeah, yeah. The, Lots of people apparently they're having to tag their frozen chickens now. They people are. People have been they running are, away yeah. with frozen chickens. It's not like something easy to nick, is it? A whole frozen chicken. <laughs> Especially one that's starting to melt. <laughs> you know, what, what are you doing? Oh, I'm a pregnant woman <laughs> and my waters have just broke. It's not... <laughs> Maybe the way to get out, right, think being beyond the box is to put a chicken on your head and then start screaming about being genetically modified. Everyone would be terrified about it. A you. frozen it's chicken. Hard. Yeah, but really go for it. Ram it on. Maybe sellotape it, sellotape it around. I think it would and be... go, <laughs> And everyone like, whoa, back off, it's happened, it's happened. You get home, num, 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 you know? <laughs> and then you've got it an interesting an incredible plan. <laughs> it is just... I, I, said, well, I, can't, I can't see a flaw in that plan. <laughs> When well, you skin. walk into a shop, yes. you ram a frozen chicken onto your head. Or set a tack, or blue tack. Or, or, or blue, <laughs> blue tack. Yeah. Blue tack, a frozen really chicken. Ram it on. Really ram really it on. Really ram it on. And then go... <laughs> yeah, and, that, and that alone will have them go, oh, I'm terribly sorry. Uh, <laughs> why stop I there? Don't... Why not have sweeties for eyes and sausages for fingers? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, nothing what? for dessert in your plan, Howard. Oh. <laughs> You've just not thought this through, have you? <laughs> But we are apparently in the middle of a countryside <laughs> crime wave. Have you seen this? Are people stealing chickens? People are stealing chickens. <laughs> no, no, not oh, just so chickens. Oh, chicken vegetables. If I lived in the country, I'd be delighted if someone did a crime because I'd be bored out of my mind. <laughs> Thank God you've turned up with a shotgun to steal my rhubarb. Could you kill me on the way out? <laughs> <laughs> but there were some people, weren't there, who were stealing lead Yes, from church, church roofs. roofs yeah. But lead and copper and all are being stolen out of churches uh, because the value of it's gone up like 300%. If only we had built our houses out of lead and copper. <laughs> well, we'd be sitting kid, pretty. When I was a kid, I, I grew up in a vicarage. And uh, in 10 years, I'm just saying this is nothing yet, in 10 years we were burgled 13 times, the vicarage. 
And on the last occasion, all they stole was my pants. <laughs> <laughs> Were they made of lead? I bought, <laughs> yeah. I had been to... Uh, I'd been to CNA or somewhere to buy school... You know, I was about 12. And I'd, all I'd bought was new pants. My mum bought me about 12 pairs of pants. They took every single pair of them. <laughs> Were you wearing one of the pairs at the time? Because oh. technically that's a different kind. Oh, though. I wish I had been. <laughs> I hope one day you see someone in those pants. Yeah. Although I can't imagine how that situation would have been. <laughs> Well, I might as well try the gay thing once. Those are my pants! <laughs> um, by the way, how are people that's going to be planning to save money this summer? They're going to go on a holiday in England. This is, yes. Which apparently, that's what the paper said this week, and then it went on to say, there is no evidence that this is happening. We just <laughs> hear it on the grapevine. Yes. It actually says that. In the Yet time. another way to scare you all. <laughs> Have you been to an English seaside town? It's like a holding pen for the Jeremy Kyle show. <laughs> I was in Hastings last week. I realised that there'd been a battle in Hastings. What I didn't realise was that it had just finished. <laughs> Nobody wants to go on holiday in England, though, do you? you know, I you want to. Do. No, I you like don't. No, you don't. Either. You've got no pants. You're a lunatic. The thing uh. is... <laughs> <laughs> don't prove it. Don't prove it. <laughs> he does this every episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Later, at the end of that round, the points are going to Russell, Ed and Andy. Yeah. OK, now we play a round called New Spin Me Right Round, Baby Right Round. <laughs> this game involves Stephen, Andy, Frankie and Russell, so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This is where we test our performer stand-up skills. We'll spin the wheel and give them a topic and they can step in if they have any jokes on us. The winner's the team with the best stuff. Here we go. Let's spin the wheel. The first area is technology. Who wants to come in on that? Andy. <laughs> They basically say, oh, technology, it improves our lives. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, does it? Give you an example, missing text. Why do your mobile phone companies send you missing text? Why not wait until they've got the text and then send you that? That would be like sending people an envelope and then putting a bit of paper inside it saying no letter. Well done, Andy. <laughs> OK, let's spin the wheel again. The subject is parents. Who wants to talk about that? <laughs> Stephen Hale. <laughs> Good evening. My parents are very tough when I grew up. Uh, as a kid, I'd say to my mum and dad, Mum, Mum, can I play outside? And she'd go, Shut up, bastard! <laughs> play outside, go upstairs and read a book. We had one book, the phone book. <laughs> I read it. It wasn't a great read. I don't want to spoil it for you. Lots of characters. And at the end... A lot of Polish people turn up. <laughs> My dad, on the other hand, was the kind of man who played mind games. Think back to when you were kids. Did your dad ever say this to any of you? If you're a naughty boy, the bogeyman will come and get you. <laughs> yeah? But obviously not in that voice. <laughs> in your own dad's voice. I'm not suggesting you wake up one morning in Exeter... And your dad goes, quickly, get up! The Combine Harvester has escaped. <laughs> Thank you. Stephen K. Ross. <laughs> OK, that leaves with Russell and Frankie. Let's spin the wheel. The next topic is the media. Who wants to come in? Russell. I'll be there. I think the papers are making this country a a worse place to live. Don't you feel like that? Just the unremitting horror of the Daily Express. They must well just get rid of news and just have her every day. Don't go outside! <laughs> it's full of queers, blacks and crime! Oh, if only Diana was here! And... <laughs> you sort of sat there going, come on. But they're all the same, you know? They're all the same. The Daily Mail every day. Asbos Muslim speak, camera speak, camera, Asbos Muslim speak. The sun... Are you a pedo? Are you a pedo? Have a bang on her tit 16 today. Are you a pedo? <laughs> you know? <laughs> the Independent, you try and read it, it's like it's grabbing you by the throat. Are you recycling? Are you? <laughs> you just killed a polar bear! You! <laughs> all the while, the Guardian's in the corner fanning itself with a wall chart, you silly little things. <laughs> Tell them, Telegraph. Cricket! Cricket! <laughs> Too much. <laughs> OK, we're left with Frankie. Let's spin the wheel. The topic is 
It's the UK. Oh, in Ireland. <laughs> I've been uh, touring around Britain. It's been rubbish. <laughs> we're, in, uh, we're in Bristol, and everybody in Bristol is just hilarious. There's a guy in the train station trying to buy a sandwich, and the woman goes, that'll be three pounds, please. And he goes, I'm not paying three pounds for that. And she says, well, it's three pounds, you know, take it or leave it. And he walked off. And as he got to the door, he turned round and he went, well, I'll have the last laugh, right? Cos I ain't even hungry. <laughs> was topped by the restaurant I went to in Bristol where on the toilet wall someone had drawn a massive cock and along the shaft they'd written Bon Appetit. <laughs> Thank you, boy. At the end of that round, the points go to Andy and Russell. Our next round is called Newsreel. We play in a recent piece of footage featuring people in the news and ask you to suggest what might be being said. This week's clip features mm. French President Nicolas Sarkozy and the royal family. Ah, Carlo. Now we are members of the Mile High Club. <laughs> the world belongs and we can get back to our sexy games. <laughs> Tell me, are you uh, interested in organic biscuits? <laughs> Charlie boy, what do you want? Uh, you know, I see you have noticed my wife. She's a cracker, isn't she? She used to be a supermodel, used to go out with Mick Jagger. <laughs> yes, I've invented a car that runs on cheese. <laughs> what do you want, you fool? Look at her. She has magnificent boobies. Hey, look at those. Huh? You want to see them? You want to see her boobies? Hey, anyone here? You, you want to see them? Don't you? Really? <laughs> you want to see them? Well, so happens there's a book, you can see them. <laughs> ah, Your Majesty, I'm so sorry we are late. Carl and I were stacking over Gatwick. <laughs> I had to go around three times before I made my final approach. <laughs> oh, no, you froggy bastard. Where's the, where's the wife? Oh, my God. Oh, look at her. Oh, she puts a lead in my pencil. <laughs> yes. Oh, you're lovely. Oh, yes. Oh, quick, Carla. What's your number? We haven't got much time. <laughs> oh, what I could do with a woman like that, Nicola. Yes. I'd break her in. Yes, do the bad So who's boss? Approach her with a big weapon like the man on my right here. That's all. Yes. <laughs> Oh, this, this thing, no, this is, uh, this is from George at Asda. Um, uh, ah, look, here's something for you, Nicola. It's an army. He won't recognise you. You don't have one in France. These aren't hats, by the way. No, it's her own hair. Oh, let's go for a pint, shall we? Where shall we go? The Fox and Firkin. Oh, have you uh, seen my wife? She's a cracker, isn't she? she has magnificent boobies, yes. She fancies me, even though I have to stand on a box. Yes, I, uh, I noticed that. Incidentally, have you seen a programme called Wife Swap? Yes. <laughs> Why for here, there? The next round is called Headliners. Here's a typical picture of humble football star Cristiano Ronaldo. <laughs> but what does R-I-S-C stand for? Is it really I signed contract? <laughs> is it referees immediately sense cheating? <laughs> Is it Risky Investment, Spanish Club? <laughs> is, it, is it Ronaldo's irremovable shoe conundrum? <laughs> is Rich, it... ignorant, spoiled crybaby. <laughs> is it Ronaldo? <laughs> is it Ronaldo is secret creationist? Hmm. He doesn't believe in evolution yeah. after playing with Wayne Rooney for two years. <laughs> Is it Ronaldo Invite Sex Crime? <laughs> it's a new show by the makers of Wife Swap. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know Every week, Ronaldo invites a sex crime. Mm. This week. <laughs> Hola. Like bien, bien, bienvenidos a Sex Crime. Uh, <laughs> can we possibly veer towards... The Obviously S is the for or. slavery, isn't it? The S is oh. for slavery, yes. Ronaldo, Ronaldo in slavery... <laughs> per... Conundrum. Contract. Contract. Controversy! 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 <laughs> It doesn't count if he says half the words. Yes, the answer I was looking for was Ronaldo and slavery controversy. The Manchester United winger is keen on a move to Real Madrid and back the words of FIFA president Sepp Blatter, who likened the football transfer system to modern slavery. Talking of slavery, do you reckon when the Egyptian slaves were building uh, pyramids, some of them are going, this is a disgrace? 
being treated like footballers. <laughs> you know, so that'd be great. It is a very, a very distasteful remark to make when these men are being traded for yes, millions of pounds to, to, to compare it to slavery. The thing is, we're saying, what, Ronaldo doesn't have a sense of perspective? Yeah. Since early childhood, he has been praised and rewarded ludicrously yeah. for having very well-coordinated feet. <laughs> Of course he's not got a sense of perspective. We're lucky he's not killed someone <laughs> very skillfully with his feet. There's Is no that, point, there's the no point us saying we know what it's like to be Ronaldo. We have no idea what it's like to be Ronaldo. Drinking smart cocktails that teach you capoeira, having sex with beautiful android women. If we had to live <laughs> Ronaldo's life for five minutes, we would shut our brains out of our eyes. <laughs> It is. It, it's a very moving cry for understanding yeah. for Ronaldo. If footballers can be treated as slaves, Max Mosley must be thinking, I've got the wrong sport. <laughs> <Don't you think? laughs> Football's just distraction. Distract Absolutely. you from the real world, distract you from the war. Instead, they should replace football with just a guy bringing out a big bunch of keys and going, look at the shiny, shiny. <laughs> No. You've cancelled the football season. Look at the shiny, shiny. <laughs> it would particularly work if you brought out Jangle the Keys and then there were loads of internet sites about, I wonder what keys they'll have next year. <laughs> <laughs> Why has Margaret Thatcher been back in the news this week? She nearly died. Or so I thought. One bloke cheered over there. But, um, <laughs> there was a headline about her state funeral. So you suddenly go, oh, oh she died. No. She's fine, and yet we're planning her funeral. <laughs> but she was requesting. She was, she's the one involved in the planning. Right? Yeah, yeah, she's oh, requested, like, St Paul's or some of that, and no one's... And everybody's going, yeah, of course, well, yeah. Then we'll spell your name in fireworks. I don't right? know. Yeah. I think it's good, you know, give her a state funeral, because a lot of people will want to pay their last respects, and a lot more people will want proof yeah. that she is really dead. <laughs> It'll be the, the first time that the 21-gun salute shoots the coffin. <laughs> <laughs> but what's the point of holding the funeral in London, right? Surely, if they held it up north, there would be a much better turnout because there'd all be the loads of people in the streets having a party. <laughs> How much do you think it's going to cost? Three million. Three million. Three yeah. million. For three million, they could give everyone in Scotland a shovel and we would dig a hole so deep that we could <laughs> hand it over to Satan personally. <laughs> Frankie's right. <laughs> what is that? It is. That here, is. Here's a clip of Margaret Thatcher singing Angels by Robbie Williams. <laughs> the, uh, oh, the, fear, the great fear is that... Um, uh, where she'd pass away now, that there aren't enough soldiers around to line the route. They'll need to and line so it, would, it would it would be like some sort of cartoon where <laughs> you could only shoot it from one side or cough it, and the soldiers would stand there, and then when they're out of shot, they'd run around the back, <laughs> yeah, and they'd just line up again. <laughs> I'm fascinated by the flowers in the hearse, cos do you reckon they'll have Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher? It might be too long, so they might have to have PMT, which would be fantastic, <laughs> So I'll tell you another episode from my no, life. Wait, no, wait, no, actually... <laughs> actually, no, 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 I want... No, rather than you telling me another story from your childhood, I want to pitch this question in, right? Who okay. else received an honour this week? I did. That oh, yeah, you. I saw that. Yeah. This is a photograph of you receiving an honour this week. <laughs> uh... I was awarded it for getting rid of all the rats in Hamlet. <laughs> 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 what, what, what were you awarded? I was given an honorary fellowship of the University of Northampton. Northampton? Oh, yeah. Isn't that Which one is... of those jump dump ones that used to be a swimming pool? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't oh, an honorary right. fellowship at the University of Northampton similar to getting like a VIP pass to Roxy's nightclub yeah. in Milton Keynes? Do you know, if you, if you put a little cord have? on the right hand side, the hat flushes on my head. <laughs> <laughs> The campaign poster for Don't Let Your Kids Out of Your Sight. <laughs> <laughs> so at the end of that round, along with everything else he's been given this week, the points go to Frankie Hughes Davis! <laughs> now we come to our final quick fire round called Scenes We'd Like to See. This is for everyone, so if you can make your way over to the performance area, please. I call it ideas for scenarios we'd love to see, and the performers come in with their suggestions. Okay, here we go. The first subject is. Things you're unlikely to hear on a quiz show. <laughs> Here is your starter for ten. Spring rolls, sesame toast and chilli balls with corn. <laughs> oh, and welcome to Ask the Family. Mr Fritzel, where's the rest of them? <laughs> Hello, 
Hello, we're Ant and Deck, and welcome to Double Our Money. Oh, double your money. <laughs> I'm Ann Robinson, and if my Botox wears off, my face will turn into a scrotum. <laughs> <clears throat> Look at what you could have won if you went to school. <laughs> <laughs> Name? Ted Smith. Occupation? Carpenter. And your chosen specialised subject? The life and work of the carpenter, Ted Smith. <laughs> <laughs> For a million pounds, complete this well-known phrase. The... <laughs> uh, like a vowel. Vowel. Mm. Vowel. <laughs> vowel. <laughs> vowel. <laughs> Is the answer... <laughs> <laughs> I'm Richard Whiteley. Did it, did it, did it, did it, did Welcome to Inflation Adjusted. Who wants to be a Zimbabwe millionaire? <laughs> it's the banker. He says he's got your kids. <laughs> and your question is on celebrities. What jocular Irish host of the popular show Mock the Week is known by his friends as Dobby for his uncanny resemblance to the house elf in Harry Potter? <laughs> <laughs> the next topic is things that would change the atmosphere at a dinner party. Ignore the banging. She's been in there for 24 years. <laughs> Help yourself to Nibbles. He was our favourite hamster, but it's what he would have wanted. <laughs> Are you sure this is pork? <laughs> it's just because Mike Crackling has a tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, we don't say grace. We just sacrifice a child to the great god Imhotep. <laughs> <laughs> Doorbell! Excellent. That'll be Heather Mills and James Blunt. Opie's brought his guitar. <laughs> I hope nobody's allergic to nuts, because I like to rest mine on the table. <laughs> well, this is absolutely lovely. I say we all raise a glass to the floor! <laughs> <laughs> Ten of you arrived. Only one will leave. <laughs> Anyway, long story short, after about two hours, you couldn't tell what was poo and what was chocolate. <laughs> there is a vegetarian option. You can fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> OK, at the end of that round, the points go to Russell, Ed and Andy. That's the end of the show. This week's winners are Andy Parsons, Ed Byrne and Russell Howard. <laughs> Commiserations to Frankie Moore, Hugh Dez and Stephen K. Moss. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I'm Darby. Good night. The Arnold Feeney Laboratory holds a dark secret, but it comes to light with Chris Addison and Lab Rats next on BBC Two. Then pensioners out for a laugh. Jack and Victor are still game at ten. <laughs>